Good morning, everyone. For those of you out in your cars, remember you can turn on your radio to 89.1. That's FM 89.1. And you'll be able to hear us just a little bit better. Um, this is uh, just a reminder that we are going to have a congregational meeting today. Uh, the council voted this past week on how this is going to work just to help us get that quorum and this crazy time of a global pandemic. Um, so after the service, if you are a voting member, if you'll just stay right where you are, you're actually going to get a ballot with a yes or no um, for the 2021 proposed budget on there. Um, our council people will bring you a ballot. You'll circle it, turn it back in. Your name will be crossed off uh, just so no one can vote more than once. Um, hopefully we have 68 ballots coming today. If we don't, then it will stay open for voting members to come back next week that weren't here this week and vote again. Once we hit 68, the vote will be closed. Um, and David Beaver will kind of give you more information on that after the service. But just remember to stick around if you're a voting member for that. And there will be a time for discussion if you have any questions. And we do have paper copies of the budget if you need to look at that in person they are on the cart there. Speaking of the cart, you will see the offering plate there for during the offering portion of our hymn. You can bring your offering up and place it there. Um, and we also have communion kits there. Now those aren't for this service, but we wanted to put them there so that you go ahead and get them this week for next week's service. And that is just in case it were to rain or if we couldn't meet outside like this, that we can still have communion with our service next week. And for those of you that are only watching from home, just remember that we have the kits here and communion is next week. So if you wanna stop by the church sometime this week and pick one up for your family, you are certainly welcome to do that. Um, the Worship and Music Committee has a planned meeting for January 28th at 6.30. So if you are on that committee, please save the date and time for that. And you can see Scott Hefner if you have any questions. And I do believe those are all of the announcements that we have at this time. So with that, we will prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I have uh, I have to, I don't want to, but I have to make remarks about what happened this week. It is my duty, not my joy. But I must say something as your pastor about the events that occurred in Washington. And I'm simply going to say that the Bible tells us that a house divided against itself cannot stand. And it is clear and obvious that uh, there are great, significant, painful, and difficult divisions that run very deep in this nation that I love and that you love. Somehow, some way, to secure a bright future for our children, our grandchildren, and our great-grandchildren, we're going to have to play a role, make some type of contribution to healing these divisions and bridging these differences. As Lutheran Christians, we have in our creed, we have in our faith statements and our belief stance that is to love God and serve your neighbor. But I think at this point in time, all of us should realize that as believers in Jesus Christ, we are going to have to spread our faith. We're going to have to share our faith. We're going to have to spread our call and try to influence others. Our Lord, our God, our leader is our triune God. Jesus Christ declared that he is the truth, the life, and the way. Somehow or another, each one of us needs to find a way to be a source of peace, healing, source of uh, accurate information and truth to help heal the visions that run so deep in our country. Pray, pray, pray that God will touch the hearts of our neighbors. Pray that God will use you to be an instrument of peace, healing, and unity. Pray that God will open the eyes of those who right now cannot see the truth. Pray that there will be peace, love, and harmony in our nation that nothing will cause us not to love and serve our neighbors. God made all of us. God loves all of us. Jesus died for all of us. No one has the right to separate us or to declare anyone else less than a child created in the image of God. Somehow, some way, ask God to use you <coughs> as part of the solution. Because somehow, some way, we need God to bring unity and peace and justice to our nation. I've also been informed that I think it was the 9th or the 10th 
of this past, of this week, or some recent day, that it was law enforcement day. And I am certainly concerned about the danger that our law enforcement people are exposed to. And in this climate, in this time, if there ever was a time we needed men and women to be agents of justice, agents of peace, it is now. So let us indeed pray for everyone who risks their lives to protect us, who go out and endanger themselves so that we can sleep at night unafraid. Pray that God will protect them, that God will guide them, and that God will use them to be agents of his peace and as well his love and justice. Having said that, let us begin our worship today with confession and forgiveness. Please stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sins, whose mercy endures forever. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done, things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we celebrate the baptism of our Lord, let us give thanksgiving for our baptisms. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Together, join to Christ in the waters of baptism. We are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water in your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. 
We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit. Renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise in Jesus Christ our Lord. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. No. Our Kyrie and Canticle of Praise. Let us pray. Holy God, creator of light and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace and transform us by your spirit that we may follow after your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God struck over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Word of God, word of life. Our psalm is Psalm 29. Yes. 
reading from Acts. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, nope. we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance telling people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. All together there were about seven of them. Word of God, word of life. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the bonds of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Dear beloved, will you lend me your imaginations for a moment as we bring you a message from the Gospel of Mark this morning as we celebrate the baptism of our Lord? Imagine with me a, 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 a preacher. He's walking through town and he runs across a, a little boy who, well, not so much a little boy, but he runs across a sort of a teenager. A, a little boy who's been known to be troubled, cruel, stays in trouble, a pretty mean, angry boy. And this little boy is carrying a cage full of birds. And, and, and so the, the, the preacher stops and he sees the little boy with the birds. Something strikes him, perhaps it's the Holy Spirit. And he, he asks the boy, he says, what are you going to do with this cage of birds? What are you going to do with those birds? And the little boy says, well, I'm going to take them home. I'm going to have some fun with them. He says, well, what, what do you mean have some fun? I'm going to play around with them. And then after that, what are you going to do? Well, I've got a couple of cats at home, and they like birds. For some reason, this preacher was struck, I guess, by the Holy Spirit to say, look, I'll, I'll buy the birds from you. Let me have them. I'll buy the whole cage of birds from you. And we said, man, you don't want those those birds. Those, they're, they're not, you know, they're, they're just field birds. They they don't sing to anything. They, they're not worth anything. They're no good. They, you know, they don't deserve anything. You know, why you want to buy these birds? 
he said, look, how much will you sell them to me for? And, and so he negotiated with the boy, got a price, and bought the cage full of birds. And of course, he took them to the edge of town, opened the gate, and let the birds go free. Well, that Sunday when he went to his church and he took the cage into the pulpit and he explained to them why he had this cage and what had happened. And he explained to them that the law, Satan working using the law, the law was actually the cage. Satan was a little boy and the birds were us, human beings and that Jesus had come, paid the price by dying on the cross, suffering for us, taking our sins, and paying the penalty for them to open the gate of the cage of the law, free us from Satan and sin so that we could fly to the heights of heaven. My brothers and sisters, that sums up this gospel message. At the baptism of Jesus Christ, we get the gates of the law, the cage of the law being opened, the gates of heaven being opened. We see and get certified the gift of Jesus Christ to us. And we see the beginning of the gospel that saves our souls. So if you want to, think about these three words and carry them with you. The gates, the gift, and the gospel. See, the text tells us that when Jesus was baptized, the heavens were torn and some Case it says rip hard. And, and, and this is this is divine symbolism that the way for sinful human beings to be able to really enter into the glories of heaven had come and was being made. We see sort of a bookend. In here in Mark's gospel, the heavens are torn, but also on that Friday when Jesus died on the cross, one of the gospel tells us that the veil of the temple was torn in two, opening the way from the outer court where most well, the human beings went to worship to the inner courts where only the high priest could go had been made. Again, this tearing, this opening is all. Oh, it begins with the gut, with the baptism, open the gospel because Jesus in the gospel allows us now to have interest into heaven. Anyone that thinks that the Mosaic law, the Old Testament laws, had anything to do with people getting saved and being forgiven of their sins just doesn't understand. The law taught us what sin was. It made us aware of how sinful we are, the impact of the fall upon us. We we're born with these sinful natures, and only God can deal with that. And the law is just that cage that holds us. We might try to keep the law, try to do right, but we always fail. We never can fail, so we're never going to get out. It's just a frustrating life to struggle with that. And here Jesus comes and he opens the gate so that now by his fulfilling the law, by his sacrifice, by his death and resurrection, we now, we now can be sure that there is a place called heaven where our souls to live forevermore. Your voice in this text of the gospel comes down, and the voice says, 
You are my beloved son in whom I well please. This certifies that Jesus of Nazareth, the incarnate Jesus of Nazareth, the one who has put on human flesh, the God-man, the God-human, is indeed the Old Testament promised Messiah, the one who will fulfill the Old Testament promises to give us eternal life, to take away our sins, and to open the gates to eternal life. Jesus is being certified as the Messiah, the promised Son of God. It reigns of John 3, 16. The gift for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The gift is being declared for us by the voice. The gates are being opened. The gift is being declared through the baptism of Jesus Christ. We are being told again that our baptism will be a seal for our reception of the gift of faith in Jesus Christ. Your baptism is so important. Always cherish it and honor it because it reminds you that God has promised by your faith in Jesus Christ, by your embracing the gift of faith given by God in Jesus Christ, you have eternal life. Nothing and no one can ever take it away. And finally, the gospel. Here we see in Jesus the gospel being realized. This baptism marks the beginning of the gospel and the end of the law. The gospel, the message that our souls are saved by faith in Jesus Christ and by God's grace alone. God gives us a gift of faith, but he works in us through the power of the Holy Spirit, which is the point of the dull descending. The, the Holy Spirit now takes on a new work, the work of working in us to confirm and, and to conform and to urge and move us to believe in Jesus to receive the gift and for the gift of faith to become our faith by which God can then give us the gift of salvation through grace alone and the presence of the Holy Spirit in us that comes when that gift is given to us of salvation, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the dove descending is for us. And the key again is the baptism of Jesus is the power of our own baptism. What a wonderful text. What a wonderful day in the life of the church. I could go on and on, but I know I'm running out of time, so I'll stop and just sum up. The gates are open. Thank God. The cage, the cage of the law, the cage of sin, the rule of Satan over our lives, has been broken. The gates have been opened so that we can flee and fly out of the gates of the law, the gates of the condemnation of sin, and fly into the gates of heaven that are open. We receive the gift of Jesus Christ, the gift of faith in him, the gift of his redeeming, atoning, sacrificial work on this earth the wonderful gift given to us that we receive simply by believing in him and the gospel is a way of salvation and a way of life is securely promised divinely certified and in just a few days completed 
when our Savior dies and rises again. Finally, again, embrace your baptism. Cherish it. When life gets hard, when you mess up, when you feel discouraged, remember, your baptism is God's seal that he will never leave you, never forsake you, that the Holy Spirit resides in you and will lead and guide you and give you the ultimate victory. Amen. Our hymn of the day. Let us confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. Those outside with me, please stand. Let us begin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Our prayers of intercession. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. O Lord our God, Thou who art the divine physician, we know that You have healing power in Your word and in Your speech. We, the members of this church, unite our hearts in prayer for the healing of Jonathan Udy, James Goodlock, Vera Martin and Kay Erpa. Please, Lord, hear our cry for help and our answer and answer our call for healing. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray for our beloved brothers and sisters who are ill, injured, shut in, grieving the loss of family members, and or serving in the military. Jordan Barker, Joshua Best. Marty Best, Jerry and Shirley Black, Gary Bradford, Betty Bongarner, Gail Kay, Harry, Carrie Cloninger, Jerry Cloninger, Roy Cloninger, Jean and Lou Collins, Jean Dover, Austin Earl, Jonathan Udy, Michael Finger, Ted and Francis Goins, Mark and Thor Ganak, James Goodluck, Pauline Guest, Kelly Hafner, Tina Hester, Mary Frances Hovis, 
David Hoyle, Paula Hull, Danny Huss, Ann Kiever, Mark Kennedy, Cody Land, Betty Faye Lineberger, John Lineberger, Hunter Grant McConnell, Malcolm Lynn, Vera Martin, Louise McManus, Henry Moffitt, Martha Paysauer, Sandy Plonk, Jill Robinson, Cindy and Danny Sacred, Stephen Seacrest, Emily Sides, Todd Stillwell, Sally Therese, Chris Thornburg, Kay Erfa, Debbie Walsh, and all those grieving the loss of loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, our, our love and our prayers extend beyond our congregation to the friends and extended family you have blessed us with. In your grace and mercy, please bless, heal, and keep Reverend John and Nancy Bollinger, Reverend John Duncan and his family, Patty Cloninger, CRU Military, Nancy Friday, David Gribble, Brindley Long, Leah Mackey, Patricia Quinn Presley, and the families of Urban Lineberger, John Holloman, and Megan Duncan. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord our God, we thank you for our church staff and council, our presiding bishop Elizabeth Eaton, our synod bishop Tim Smith, and our conference dean Ben Kuyper, our sister churches, Philadelphia and Holy Communion, their new pastor, Shea Beerbaum, all local churches and pastors. Please, Lord, bless them, guide them, and use them to your glory and their joy. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for revealing effective coronavirus vaccines to scientists. Please, Lord, make the vaccines quickly available to everyone. Please, Lord, bring the suffering and dying caused by this dreaded disease to an end. Please, Lord, comfort every family affected by this pandemic in Gaston, Lincoln, and Cleveland counties, the entire state of North Carolina, our nation, and every nation on this planet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may move every human heart, that the barriers dividing us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease, and that with our divisions healed, we might live in justice and peace through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, with the words of Martin Luther, we pray. Behold, Lord, an empty vessel that needs to be filled. My Lord, fill it. I am weak in the faith, strengthen me. I am cold in love, warm me and make me fervent that my love may go out to my neighbor. I do not have a strong and firm faith at times. I doubt and am unable to trust you altogether. Oh Lord, help me. Strengthen my faith and trust in you. In you I have sealed the treasure of all I have. I am poor, you are rich and came to be merciful to the poor. I am a sinner, you are upright. With me there is an abundance of sin in you with the fullness of righteousness. Therefore I will remain with you of whom I can receive, but to whom I may not give. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Our offering. <laughs> Thank you. 
praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called for beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, halfway home from exile, wisdom for life with you, for your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love, for your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O oh God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith. Increase our hope. And deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O oh God. Draw near to all who call on you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our sending song. Turn it on. Should be on. Hello. There you go. There we go. 
I hope everybody got our uh, text, email, yeah. or uh, online how this is going to work. Our quorum number is 68. Uh, so when we vote today, we have uh, Eric. Eric. members me who are going to check you off because you can only vote one time on this budget. And what we're voting on is the budget. So uh, we will have discussion, so please do not vote until we have discussion. Uh, but anyway, when, when we get up to that 68 total for our quorum, that's when it will end. So if we get 60 today, we need eight more and 20 come next week that can vote, which that means we'll be over that quorum number and it will end at that time. So, uh, so I hope that's a good explanation. Does anybody have any questions about that? Okay, so we will open it up first to discussion. If anybody has any discussion they'd like to have. And at that time, I'm going to tell you about the budget and how we met our budget and uh, how we were meeting our expenditures. As far as budget information, we are $12,325 on our budget. We are behind. But on the other hand, as far as, in, as far as expenditures, our bills, we are ahead. We're $33,119 ahead on our bills. So it looks bad that we're behind on budget, but we're really not. We're ahead on our expenditures. So does anybody have any questions before we start the vote process? And after you vote, you can you can go. So, Mariah, has a question. Mariah, Mariah, I'm gonna hand you this because you can state your name and because everybody can hear you. You are. Can y'all hear me? Okay. So, I had already contacted them. I had a few questions about the budget as far as uh, some of the payroll going up in this time of pandemic. And I was concerned about giving a raise when other people are worried about being able to meet their bills at home. So I had some questions about that. And uh, some of that David was able to explain it to me, but I would like for him to explain it to y'all as to, to why some of those raises were proposed. Okay. Uh, those raises were talked about at the uh, finance committee and I can't remember who I was at the finance committee meeting but we discussed uh, each one of them's raise and what they were doing uh, and when we talked about it we knew that a lot of them were doing different duties than they normally were so uh, and uh, some of them have stepped up. And uh, at the time uh, when Pastor Sniven left, we were that loud a pastor. Of course, Lauren stepped right up into the role to help do whatever we needed to get things done. And as far as this coming year, we felt that uh, the ones that were here deserved a raise. Uh, we felt that they were working very hard, and it's very hard if, you, if you're in the workforce a lot of you understand that you're doing different duties along with what you normally do a lot of times. So not only are you doing it, it's a lot more stressful. So we just felt that everybody, they deserved a raise. And that's what we based it off of. I hope I answered your question as best I could. Uh, do okay. I have any more questions? I don't need the mic, but cost of living still went up even though that we're in a pandemic. You can state that. Okay. Uh, so Scott said that the cost of living went up. Uh, <clears throat> it it, it did not go up because we had a pandemic. It yeah. still went up. So. It still went up. <laughs> I have something, Marcia. Hey, I just had an email I sent, and I got a couple questions on how we're going to approach this new year 
and if our budget actually allows us to meet the <coughs> fuel expenses that we may need for the pandemic um, one being cleaning the facility two being doing some sort of virtual sunday school vacation bible school this year and maybe not in person maybe a, a home program something like that so I mean, I know the budget exceeds expenses right now, but I see our expenses going up, too. I don't think our expenses are going up. And what she was saying, I don't know if everybody could hear. Getting virtual. So she was talking about the cleaning, <laughs> the cleaning of the church and things like that and vacation Bible school. And uh, during the COVID, lessons being sent out. Is that what you're saying? Okay. She's wanting uh, uh, that maybe we should do some more for the janitorial supplies and that thing. But as we, we discussed that on the budget committee, and we decided that it was best just to leave that alone. We had Lauren, I think she had some cleaning from work for us. We're talking about coming back to church. We had some cleaning supplies to be able to wipe down the pews and stuff like that before people would come the next Sunday that we would be able to wipe things down and stuff like that. But as far as putting anything in the budget, we just left the budget like it was because, you know, we were basically meeting our budget, but we were behind on the, well, we were behind on the budget, we were meeting the Yes, So we are, we just felt that we left, we were gonna leave it the same. And that's why we did it. We really don't know, I talked today, what name? Well, they're waiting for such a discussion. Okay. But we left it the same, and then we'll cover that next year at that time if we need to do it. Because we'll have, we got extra money you know, for sure. Yeah, we'll do that. I wanted to add on what Marsha was saying, but if you all heard David, there was $33,000 of expenses that we budgeted that we did not spend. So we have the money. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> so with us collecting them, even what we collected this year, there's $33,000 we have not spent that would cover extra cleaning, would cover any kind of mailing stuff or extra materials and stuff that we have. We are very blessed to have <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Very blessed to have um, the contributions that we do in this church. Thank you. Uh, and before I forget, uh, whenever I was counting just the, how many were here, please be careful. I, I would check behind your vehicles right here, especially. I picked up a good handful of shingling nails right behind your vehicles. Right here. So please. Be wary before you back out. I don't know if I picked them all up. There's some there. Uh, so let's. Does anybody have any more questions? One more. Mariah. Well, they can't hear you. To me, I guess that would be really back to the committees to, to be able to meet with uh, there's a line there's a line there. there. But as far as stuff being sent out and stuff like that, but there's money there to be able to do uh, send outs and stuff like that. But it would be up to the committees, I think they would need to meet to be able to send things out and decide on vacation. And Amy met with Lauren, and I'm meeting with her next week. Like, you know, like now Lauren's leaving. That's up to me. So worship and, worship and music and youth committees are hear. meeting with Lauren me. this week and next week to be able to do some of those. And if you have some concerns about things being sent out, please see them or talk to them. 
because we can get those needs met if we need to do those, okay? Does anybody else have any questions about the budget? If not, please uh, vote and get them turned in. Yes. Uh, and they'll mark you off. Dave Horn, and you can you not, of course, you only get to vote one time. So if you come next week, you won't be able to vote again. It'll be new ones coming on. We're really close today. We had 72 total people here. But I don't know how many can vote. I know one of them's a little baby. <laughs> and But there's some I'm just not sure. I just went around and tried to get total numbers. <laughs> See, you should have played out here. <laughs> I was comfortable when I got later as a t-shirt and this flannel and then this. So I wasn't cold, but I wasn't hot either. I was comfortable. So there is a little breeze out here. You can hear it in the pastor's mic. No, you coming to talk? No. Okay. You Thank you so much, Scott, for all you do with the church and the sound, keeping it good for everyone. You're welcome. Daryl will be back next week. <laughs> I hope. Thank you for the music. It was beautiful. Oh. Have a great afternoon. Pastor, thank you for that amazing sermon as always. And after you can, after you vote and get your name marked off and get your uh, votes turned in, you can leave. I cannot want. leave until I shut this down. We'll continue See, this next week. Me. And we'll That's continue okay. until we meet our quorum total. Can't if we meet it today, we won't have this meeting next week. Thank you. Um, they're both doing good. Yes, Kelly's getting around better. Uh, she started driving, and uh, uh, I'm just hoping the surgery in itself was a success so that she doesn't have a future issue. Uh, she was having a hard time there. She was sick several times a week. She went to the hospital to get medication. So on and so forth. And then Tina's getting around better. Uh, she, she don't like the cold weather. She goes outside in the cold. She goes, oh, oh, Lord, these pieces of metal get cold. It's starting to hurt. <laughs> so, uh, I feel like my arthritis knee. Well, that's so if she can tell me when it's, I think it's going to be cold tomorrow. My, my hips start to hurt. <laughs> yeah, I know what's going to Yeah, there you go. So, uh, yeah, she's doing better. She's doing better. She hasn't came off the cane yet. She's, uh, really baby in it. I mean, obviously, if she does come off cane and she's got one leg that's pretty much healed, it's still needs time, and the other one, you know, especially out of surgery, so I think she'll probably baby it a little bit longer because we can use cane to get She doesn't rest and, and stay off of it like she should either. Is she elevating the um, she, she sits in a chase lounge and has an elevation flow, but it's Yes, for that aspect, I'm trying to her legs and whatnot, but uh, still she's hard yet. Like over Christmas, I told her, sit down, I can do this. She wouldn't do it. So, anyway, that's a typical guy. I don't want to do what I need to do. You know, that's the thing. She's setting back. She's adding to go drive, so she said she got a car in the car. I said, where are you going? I don't know. I'm just going to drive down the road and come back just so I know I can't change. Just like this. Then we we'll get back. <laughs> What's going on with Kelly? She has Crohn's. So she had a part of her intestine removed. Hey, I'll have 